Friends, welcome to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and I have the privilege of serving the United Methodist Church of New Lenox, Frankfurt United Methodist Church, and Mokina United Methodist Church merged together. I ask that you center yourself, take a deep breath, focus on the power of the divine coming into your life today as we journey through this daily devotion together. Friends, hear the affirmation. Lord, you go before me in all that we do. Therefore, we will not be afraid. Friends, would you join me in an attitude of prayer? Almighty God, you know the difficulties we face each day. Remind us that you are very near to us, that indeed you are a shield around us. We do not fear our adversaries, because salvation comes from you. Amen. Friends, our theme this week is fear not. Fear not. What a wonderful affirmation from God who is continuously calling us to not be afraid. Our anthology reading today comes from Keith Beasley Topliff, The Beginnings of Wisdom. Wisdom begins when we learn for ourselves that God is not safe, cannot be approached without fear and trembling. But it is only when we come convinced that God is also good and loving that we can truly begin to grow as Christians. Awe, reverent fear, forms the foundation for a formative rather than deformative relationship with God. It enables us to trust, to entrust ourselves fully to God. Uh, This is going to need some unpacking. Soren Kierkegaard, Danish philosopher and theologian, wrote a wonderful work called Fear and Trembling. If you really want to dig into this theme uh, a lot more, uh, that would help guide you a little bit. But there's a tension in our worship of God. And and you see it throughout scripture. And and I think sometimes humanity and scripture writers err on one side or the other, because that's what we as humans do. God is the God of the cosmos, the God who created the heavens and the earth, the God who is more powerful than the, the scariest things in our world. You think of these ancient creatures that roam the earth, or even the weird stuff that still exists today in the depths of the ocean. Or you think of those storms that terrify us, or you think of, you know, the, the, uh, the, un, un, uh, the chaotic kind of nature of, of our world and our life, or the vastness of space. God is bigger than all of that. And so... <clears throat> How can you not kind of be in awe and also kind of tremble in God's presence? This isn't, this isn't my buddy, you know, Bill. This isn't Steve-O. This is God. And so, and, and if you look at like the imagery of God's throne room in Revelations, I mean, it is wild. I, I carry a picture of that with me because it, it helps balance these two images. We have this, this image of this almost un, unviewable, unapproachable God who is ruler and creator of all. And then we have another image of a man who lived in poverty in simplicity, who broke bread with simple, downtrodden people. Those are two very different figures. We have what a friend we have in Jesus, but if all we do is is make Jesus our, our buddy, you know, Jesus is my co-pilot, like he's okay as long as he's in the seat and I'm in control. Then, then we've erred too much on that. And, and if all we do is this God is coming after me and God is like, you know, he sees me when I'm sleeping. He knows when I'm awake. Like, like he knows if I've been bad or good. 
Like if that's the kind of, I got this weird Santa Claus God, and I don't think that's even in the nature of Santa Claus, but that's a different thing for a different day. Then, then we're erring too much on that. So how do we hold those two things in balance? How do we approach God with awe, with fear and trembling? And then realize that God is love. God loves us. So even though God holds our lives in his hands, even though God controls the winds and the waves, even though God is bigger than all of us, God actually cares, actually loves. That's one of the tensions of scripture. and That's one of the tensions of the gospel. And I think if we can live into it, we won't truly be afraid. Our scripture reading today is Psalm 56. God, have mercy on me. I'm being trampled. All day long, my enemy oppresses me. My attackers trample me because I have so many enemies. Exalted one, whenever I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise. I trust in God, I won't be afraid. What? Can mortal men do to me? All day long they frustrate my pursuits and their thoughts are evil against me. <clears throat> they get together in sudden ambush. They're watching my steps, hoping for my death. Don't rescue them for any reason. In wrath, bring down the people, God. You yourself have kept track of my misery. Put my tears into your bottle. Aren't they on your scroll already? Then my enemies will retreat when I cry out. I know this because God is mine. God whose word I praise. The Lord whose word I praise. I trust in God. I won't be afraid. What can anyone do to me? I will fulfill my promises to you. I will present thanksgiving to you. Because you've saved my life from death. Save my feet from stumbling so that I can walk before you in the light of life. Oh, psalm 56 is a great psalm. Uh, in the light of life. I, I, but I, I love this word. I, I, I keep it close to my heart. I trust in God. I won't be afraid. What? Can mortal men do to me? CB says, what can anyone do to me? I, I, again, it's easier said than done because people can't hurt you. They can, they can call you names. They can go behind your back. They can sabotage your plans. They can uh, create false witness against you. They can put you on false trial. They can create uh, you know, a, a crowd around you, an army around you. They can they can beat you and torture you. They can, they can kill you. People can do a lot. But really, what can they do? If my life is in light, if my life is in God, nothing. Words don't matter. It, it, insults. I, I I get it. it. It it's easier said than done, and I and I get it. It hurts. But if the God of the universe loves me, it doesn't really matter what other people say. If I know that I'm following God's will, it, it doesn't really matter what other people think. If I know that my life is in God's hands, it doesn't matter if someone else takes it. Again easier said than done, but that's where I want to be. And I think that's where we all want to be. And hopefully one day we live in a world where we'll all be on the same page. And we'll stop hurting each other. We'll stop killing each other. We'll stop tearing each other down. And our fears will be relieved. Friends, today is a time of confession. It's good for our souls and spirits to let go of everything we're hanging on to, to turn back towards God, to ask for forgiveness, not only of God, but of others. 
So take time in silence, asking for God, confessing whatever's on your heart, letting go of the things that need to be let go. Friends, hear the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. God remembers your sins and iniquities no more. Let yourself forgive and forget and ask for forgiveness of others and offer it freely. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.